Welcome to a new episode of These Go to 11. Let's turn it up. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to These Go to 11, an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. This not only helps us to get our content out there, but also helps us to find out what you, our faithful listeners, think. Welcome back to these Go to 11. Once again, Nathan Bell. Joining me as always, Greg Dutcher. Greg, what's going on, man? Dude, the further we get into the month of January, the happier I get. (laughs) Dude, I, because that means the days are getting a little bit longer, and we're right. moving on to spring. Well, we're uh, we're just shy. What is this? January tenth, right now. January tenth, right. Uh, so we are we are about uh, eleven days shy of it being a full month since the shortest day of the year. Yeah. So, what is that? Every every minute a week, something like that. Yeah. And so. then you get the uh, sort of light year leap with the um, daylight savings. When we do the daylight savings, whenever you yeah. Get that. But no, I'm I'm so far so good, dude. I'm holding on. Yeah, I'm holding on. That's good. Yeah, and uh, you've got, uh, I believe it's this week. You've got a class coming up that you're going to be taking and doing a little bit of work with for yes, your uh, yes. courses, right? Beginning of next week, actually. But uh, yeah, actually, no, within a week, six days. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe the 16th, I'm going to be doing a course uh, that we're calling one of our core courses, yeah. sort of a foundational theology. Matt's going to do one called How Can I Change, yep. uh, which I'm really excited about on Thursday nights for three weeks. I'm going to do one on Monday nights, so you could take both. His is a little more kind of practical. If you want the 10-cent word, you know, sanctification, yep. how we... We actually experience. I, I think of all the people that hear a sermon and say, sounds great, how? Yeah. And dude, as you know, that's never been my forecast. <laughs> I just put it out there. I, yeah. I'm inspired by big pictures, word pictures. Yep. And I've always found it harder to communicate, not necessarily to experience, but communicate the experience of change. Yeah. So I think Matt really does a good job with this. Um, he's been talking to me about some of what he wants to do. And I think it's going to be great. I'm going to do one called One Story, Yep, discovering the one storyline of the Bible, right? Nice. Because it's so, the 10 cent word there would be a biblical theology. Right. Genesis through Revelation. It's amazing, dude. We've talked about this in other contexts. Yeah. 66 books, 40 authors, um, you know, over centuries. Yes. And there really is one unfolding drama. Yeah. And <clears throat> so one of my goals for that, dude, is when people take it, I hope that they'll be able to say the next time they're slogging it out yeah. in a passage in Second Chronicles right. on their Bible reading plan, like, what in the world is this about? Even if you can't fully understand the ins and outs of that particular story, yep. where does it connect yeah. to the big story? Like, it's almost like, you know, uh, what are those things, dude? Remember when people went to those things called malls <laughs> and there were those maps? Yes. You are here. Yes. That's what I'm going for. You're going for the you are You can here. always say, yeah. where am I in this thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I just think you would get security in that, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is kind of this section of this unfolding drama. Yes. That's what I'm hoping uh, will be a practical takeaway for people. So I'm, yeah. I'm pumped about That's it. That's great. That's awesome. Looking forward to it. I will uh, be either jumping in on one or both of those myself. Yeah. So looking forward to, to seeing what you guys have. Yeah, I'd go to Matt's. Mine, mine sucks. <laughs> Um, but I, I would definitely go to Matt's. I'm trying to go to Matt's and get somebody. Go- Dude, do you want to cover mine? That's good. So, Oh, man. Well, we are in uh, a series that we're doing in this podcast. Yeah. Uh, we had Kevin Marr on last week to talk to us about, um, you know, just engaging in love with the culture that we're in and how do we. Uh, you know, how do we focus in on the people rather than the issues? Yeah. And so uh, great conversation with him. And now we're, we're moving into this three-part series. And the third piece will culminate in having a friend of mine, uh, yeah. Justin Estrada, who he's the pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church, not, not the one up in New York City, mm-hmm. uh, one here in uh, Kingsville, Maryland. What does that church have? Um, or what did they have? <laughs> Tim Keller, who's he? <laughs> That's right. That's right. What we got Justin. That's right. Um, and so 
we're going to be setting up that podcast because he's going to be talking to us about the essentials, the creeds, yeah. and uh, you know, get into a little bit of the confessions mm-hmm. and, and the necessity of what those show us and teach us about the Word of God. And in order to help set us up, we're going to be doing bad quote, good quote. And yeah. so this week we're focusing on the bad quote. And we're, we're going to show some positives with it yeah. because there, there are some good things about it that it highlights. Uh, but there really is uh, some big problems with it. And so uh, we're going to talk about one uh, St. Francis of Assisi mm-hmm. or Assisi. Uh, and Greg, you've got some interesting information that you have on him. And so I want you to talk to us a little bit about who St. Francis was, because I think it is important to set up. First of all, I think it's important to understand this is an early, very early oh, yeah, church dude. father. Yeah, he is not, uh, we're used to going back to what reformers, yeah, or even what I think of as the second wave reformers, yes. right? When you get into like, Wesley, Whitfield, yes. and, and then a century later into Spurgeon. Yep. And then you could do early 20th century and you quote guys like D.L. Moody, yeah. some Hallmark guys. But uh, yeah, we're going way, way back. Yeah. Not quite early church fathers like Irenaeus or and Origen. Augustin. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Any of those guys. He's sort of a middle of the road, or I'm looking at the dates here because I thought I could commit it to memory. I couldn't. He was born either in 1181. Mm-hmm. Or 1182. I know that's been keeping you up at night, hasn't it, Nathan? Uh, you know, I just I that question has been burning on my mind, I know. and since we don't have an answer, yes. it will continue to keep me. It up. will. It will. So maybe if uh, one of our faithful listeners wants to do a dissertation, <laughs> or it could just get open AI <laughs> chat to write you one. <laughs> maybe we'll talk about that at some point. Dude. I'm thinking, dude, why don't we literally just do a podcast where ahead of time we ask the questions we want to ask, and we just read what open chat <laughs> says. That will be our very first Ask Me Anything. Uh, our yes, very it first, will be. Yeah, our it very first be. Ask Me Anything Can you imagine, AMA. dude, if somebody hears that, like, that was the greatest podcast they've ever done. I Finally, there was something something uh, uh, intelligible, uh, something with substance that I could take with me. Uh, that would be humbling. Yeah, let's not do that. Dude. I, I don't, I don't want to be upstaged by uh, Spielberg's AI. Um, but yeah, back to Frank. Uh, Frank. Yeah, that's a good. He's a Frank. That's right. Saint Francis of Assisi or Assisi. Yeah, you want to say Assisi because it feels weird to call him Assisi. Assisi right. Yeah, I was called that. It was very painful. So uh, I have heard it both ways too. But uh, I'll just go um, uh, interchangeable. Yeah, eighteen uh, or eleven eighty one. 1182, um, he died, we're more certain of that, we have a date, October the 3rd, 1226. So think about this, dude. Mm -hmm. We're talking 1100s, 1200s. Yeah. Uh, Wow. Yeah. Like, that would be 12th century, 13th century, right, if I do my my adjustment there properly. Um, So we are going way, way back. Um, he was the printing press before the, I mean, before, like you said, the, the reformation. Yes, dude. Uh, yeah. Pre-Renaissance. I mean, it's really, really interesting. Um, and, uh, he's, uh, I'm looking at this article. He's, he's heralded in a number of traditions, of course, Catholic. Yeah. That's about the only game in town back then. Yeah. But actually, uh, because of his commitment to caring for the poor, a simple faith, Mm -hmm. um, which he talked about freely, he uh, was often heralded by early Lutherans. Mm. Um, and there's debate on that. You know, when they weren't using the categories that Luther, Zwingli, right. and those guys had introduced in the Reformation, where things were so categorical, academic, well-defined, Yeah, it's a little harder to tell. Yeah. Uh, so I put him in the category, dude, with um, a guy similar, uh, in my mind at least, would be Aquinas. Yes, which is interesting if you read uh, R.C. Sproul's stuff. Yep. Dude, by the way, you know he passed away five years ago? That's... Yeah, it that seems... was like... It was mid-December. It was before yeah. Christmas, and I saw all the five years. I was like, really? Yeah. Feels like it just happened. I know. It. Yeah, it really is mind-blowing to think about someone like that and just how much um, he was a part of theological development uh, yes. for not only modern times, but personally... Uh, the things that he wrote, Holiness of God, yeah. um, just worth its weight in gold, yeah. picking that one up. And yeah, to think about, man, five years ago, you're right. It, it seems like it was it was just, you know, 
few days ago that you got up there and mentioned that because I do remember <laughs> yeah. you mentioning I, that. It was Christmas time because I played a clip of him talking about the incarnation. Yeah. I just it seemed appropriate. Just I said, look, here's a guy that influenced me. I've quoted him a, a good deal through the time. Uh, Sproul was a guy that says Protestants should claim Aquinas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not prepared to tackle that at all, dude. Right. <laughs> my my knowledge runs out. When I look into the future, I see black darkness. Yeah, yeah. I know nothing beyond what I just said. I'd have to do some research. But a sissy or a sissy is somewhat in the same category. Yeah. Um, if he, you remember, too, Frame, when we had him on years ago, yeah. talked oh. about this and said, you know, we need to give a lot more grace yes. to these older um, you know, historical figures because they're not dealing with the level of academia and research and things like that that we have today. You know, of and course. even that you think about the reformers like Calvin and uh, you know Luther and all of them had. You know, they're they're even predating some of this. Stuff. Oh, absolutely. And so, uh, giving a little bit more grace and understanding to where they were in their thought process. Yeah. It's kind of like giving grace to the Israelites and what yeah. they knew and understood about the Messiah versus what Paul knew and understood oh. about the Messiah. Yeah, night and day, dude, yeah. night and day. And I, I think that's a great illustration. It reminds me, dude, of something we've talked about a lot, too, the guys like uh, Spurgeon who did not live in a day and age where there were categories like bipolar, one, yeah. Yeah. two, yet described their experiences in ways yes. that maybe maybe uh, diagnosticians today would wince at a little bit. Yeah. Black moods, yep. melancholy. But that's what they, th- 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 those are the that's tools right. they had to work with. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's in that ballpark. But St. Francis here was the founder of, it makes sense, right? The Franciscan order. Yes. If you've ever wondered, oh, Franz- oh St. Francis of Assisi. Yes. Which is a very well-heralded uh, branch of monastic uh, Catholicism. Um he was committed to lead a life of poverty. So mm-hmm. often when you think of monks in movies, you, you'll see that. That was a very radical idea that mm-hmm. he embodied, that the person living for God in this world should not be a person uh, clinging to this world. Yeah. And he was an itinerant preacher, which means he traveled. Yeah. Um, so you see a lot of um, why people in a Protestant Reformed tradition might want to claim him and his influence. So this is the guy mm-hmm. who is allegedly the author of the quote we're going to introduce, but dude, I'm not 100% sure he even is. Yeah, and I think it's important to say that because, yeah. like you said, he is often credited with this, and I think I think sometimes our poor view of people can be based on things that we credit them with and yes. not so much things that we can actually confirm. Yeah, imagine, dude, if uh, 200 years from now somebody said, yeah, there was this guy, uh, early 21st century Nathan Bell, who said all puppies should be kicked. Oh, actually, dude, you did say that. Bad example. No, uh, no, I'm kidding. Nathan did not say that. What Nathan has told me is uh, if I ever need his services to watch my dog, uh, yeah, I could go fly a kite. Now, if I need his help getting one of my kids somewhere, he'll be there in a heartbeat. That's right. But if it's my dog, and I love that about Nathan, I know who not to ask. Nathan's like, nope. Not going to happen. Is that a dog? He'll be fine in the house. That's right. He can just... Poop over your carpet and you can clean it up when you get back. So 200 years from now, that's not where I expected to go. Dude. Imagine 200 years from now, somebody, yeah, this guy, Nathan Bell, said a puppy should be kicked. You're like, wait a minute. Or, or puppies can just go crap all over your house for all he cares. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're, you're turning in your grave, dude. Like, wait a minute. This is being attributed to me and, attributed to me and I never said it. So here's what I'm learning about these quotes. Dude. He probably never did say it. Yeah. It probably came out of his tradition, mm-hmm. his inspiration, as I think you'll you'll see the quote, committed to a very, what some would call idealistic life. By all accounts, I can read about him. This dude modeled it. Yeah. His faith was sincere, lived as a poor man yep. with few of any possessions, and traveled to preach the love of God. And uh, this is... Um, what he committed himself to. I suppose we should actually tell people what the quote is. Uh, so see, that... notice how we're building <laughs> yeah. the tension, dude? Dude, why don't you drop the quote on us? Yeah. Um, so, uh, allegedly, yes. uh, St. Francis of Assisi was quoted with, preach the gospel at all times. Use words only when necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I-, I think on first listen, there's 
some good things that we can pull from that. Oh, sure. And I think we're, we're going to talk about some of those things because the general idea would be let your life model yeah. what you believe. Yep. Right. And I think I think that is important. You know, I mean, James talks about that. You know, you'll you'll tell me you're a believer. Yeah. But don't just tell me you're a believer. Show me by the things that Show you me do. You're a believer. Yeah. Um, and so I think I think we can glean some good things. What What are some other things that you think we could we could glean from from that, Greg? Well, I think just uh, to it's probably what you said, dude, but a very specific example of that I think of is I. You know, you know, dude, how close I was to a very departed dear man, Roscoe mm-hmm. Adams, who was spiritual mentor. I'm always amazed uh, because, you know, he was a, a black man raised in the deep south by a single mother. His father died when he was four. And sometimes I'm like, how did this guy and I, how did the, Roscoe and I get so connected? And yeah. it was because of the, the gospel, because mm-hmm. of our common faith and what we shared. And, you know, if I start doing that i'll cry and then that's all i'll talk about the rest of the podcast so i'll try to move through this quickly but he says one of his earliest faith influencing memories and sadly it's not a good one yeah um he was in a little baptist church Mm -hmm. in um in his uh, town growing up in uh kings mountain north carolina and he was i think in catholic context they would call it like an altar boy okay this is the whatever non-Catholic Baptist version of that is he was mm-hmm. helping. Yeah. He was assisting. I think he was moving supplies, maybe helping the pastor or whomever get a few things in order. And he had to do something that took him outside um, at one portion in the service when announcements were, were being made. And he said he walks outside and uh, several of the deacons, these men that you know wore their suits and ties, mm-hmm. et cetera, were their backs <clears throat> were to him. So he's about an eight, nine year old kid at the time. And he sees these men who prayed these beautiful prayers, who uh, read scripture very passionately with a lot of inflection, etc. And they were passing around a dirty magazine, mm. as uh, you know, which uh, today's young person's like, what was that, right? right. It was uh, before uh, internet sources of pornography existed. Yeah. <clears throat> they were passing around Playboy or, or whatever it was. And commenting very um, explicitly mm. on the pictures, and Roscoe said he never got that image out of his head. Yeah. It disturbed him. He didn't quite know why, but he's it's a nine year old kid processing right. hypocrisy. So Fran, uh, Saint, why do I keep saying Fran? <laughs> Saint Francis's quote, allegedly his quote, yeah. um, use words when necessary. Is it's emphasizing, as you just said, action. Yeah. That if your life is in alignment with the character of Jesus, yeah. the the claims and implications and imperatives that flow out of the gospel, yes. the good news to us, yeah, it, it, people are going to see it. Yeah, Hopefully you're not stumbling across, like he was as a kid, those moments, yeah. uh, which you're like, wow, were these guys phonies? Or is it all for show? So I love how that quote, and I think that's why it's so popular mm. and why... It's on a number of people's refrigerators, yes. wall hangings, yeah. et cetera. Um, so that's that's one thing that, that stands out. So I guess just that it encourages us to be conscious of the way we live. Yeah. And know, it's it, a great quote in, in, in that in respect. That, in that respect, in that context. I, I feel like it's very popular in, in social justice movement. You know, yeah. Within oh, the no church. doubt. You know, like no this doubt. is... You know, we can we can preach the gospel all we want, but, you know, we need to be living it. And, you know, so we need to be helping the poor. We need to be helping the orphans, the way, you know, those in need. Yes. Um, we need to be doing what we can do uh, for the unbeliever who's looking in. And so you're right. I think I think there's some power to it. Yeah. It has something there that we can latch on, but it's also deficient. It is deficient, dude. That's why we decided, remember in planning this, yeah, dude, let's step on a few toes and yeah. say, this is why we're giving it a bad this quote. This is the bad quote. And again, yeah. I doubt a sissy even said it. Yeah. Um, 
but it comes out of that tradition. So we're not trying to pick on a guy who's not here to defend no. himself, but we'll take the quote at face value and assess it. So but, absolutely, dude, for all the good, yeah. there are some issues. Well, and let's be real. I mean, if we were to take the context of, of those verses in James yeah. and just talk about that, yeah. you know, don't, don't just tell me you're a believer, show me you're a believer. Yeah. That has some problems too. This is yeah. why this is why we have sixty six books. Absolutely. That uh, you know, you talked about showing the cohesive theme of scripture, showing that thread that goes throughout. You know, this is this is why God gives us a more fully developed understanding of who He is yeah. in all of Scripture. It's yeah. not just this. You know the the old joke where, you know, you can just turn anywhere you want in Scripture and let Scripture or the Spirit, oh, quote-unquote, yeah. speak to you, yeah. you know. Uh, you you flip open to where it says, you know, and Judas hanged himself, and then, yes. well, you know, that's got nothing for me. What about the next one? You know, and now go there and do likewise, yes. you know. And what you're about to do, do quickly. <laughs> right. Right? You're like, wow. <laughs> no, it's so true, dude. Or the one I've always said, I, I would, if I could tell I was losing kids when I taught, you and I taught at the same school, yeah. which you are now teaching, this is for me years ago, yep. I would say that sometimes just to hold their attention and say, man, guys, isn't it hard to believe the Bible says curse God and die? Yeah. And you'd kind of see their uh, their discomfort a little bit mm-hmm. and try to say, no, oh, guys, I'm, I, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, do we need to do that in the next chapel? I mean, that's what the Word says. Right curse God and die, and, and to try to draw them out. Does anybody know what I'm quoting? Does anybody? And eventually, if you've got usually the, the kid that was raised with uh, nine other siblings right. and was doing Bible drills when they were 18 months old, yes, that was said by Job's wife, yes. right? Um, and so you say there's context even within one individual book, one individual moment within the book. Yes. It's Job's wife saying that, which means she has become, I'm sure without her knowledge, the aider and a better of Satan's very goal, yeah, which is to get him to curse God. Yes. So, yes, the Bible says it, right? But it doesn't. That's not its authoritative message, right? So, and taking so. this quote, we do need to expand on the cons of this because I yeah. think what we're really leaving out is uh, essentially the gospel in Christ's own words where he commissions his disciples to go into the wor- world yeah. and preach the gospel. <laughs> yes. And, and and let's think about it, dude. The gospel, we say this all the time, right? What do we teach when they're kids? It means good, good news. news. Yeah. It's an announcement. Yeah. By definition, dude, this wasn't where I intended to go. My dear wife, Lisa, to anybody out there who's ever been a mime, Lisa did save this one time <laughs> when we went to New York City for her 40th birthday. There was a mime on the street. And I thought, oh, look how cool we walked by it. Lisa just said, I hate mimes. <laughs> um, so I've dropped that on her sometimes. <laughs> Boy, Lisa, you're a mimist. You hate mimes. Um, and, um, you know, and, and we talked about that a little bit. You know, and she goes, and why do they always act like they're trapped inside of some, like, invisible cube? <laughs> I said, well, what else are you going to do if you're a mime, you know? Or they're climbing a rope that's not there, or walking steps not there, and the weird white face and all this stuff. (laughs) Wasn't my goal. But, dude, the mime does not communicate. Yes. And so I think she's saying at some point it's irritating. Yeah. Right? Um, It's irritating. But a mime doesn't speak words. They're not even signing words, right? And the the idea of an announcement, like if you had a major an announcement to do, maybe that's a way to, to tie it all together. Yeah. It's like imagine Matt Smith comes to me, great, we got to make a major announcement. We're, we're, we're going to add another service. We're going to change our times. We've got a new opportunity to move to a better, cheaper location, whatever it is. Right. Well, yeah, we, we got to announce it. I know. Let's get a mime. Right. Is that what you're going to do? <laughs> charades. <Yeah. laughs> we're going to play charades. <laughs> That would be incredible to have a charade night for the announcement. How frustrated people would be. Come on. You, we've said it. No, you haven't. You've hinted at it. You've teased at it. Now, we're being kind of ridiculous yeah, yeah. here. But just to get to the point, right, it's an announcement. Yes. And an, an, an announcement, by definition, is to be announced. Right. Which involves propositions, yes. words, things with intelligible meaning that can be heard. Yes 
process. And there's scripture that speaks of this too, right? Yeah. Faith comes by hearing. Yes. And hearing by the word. So there, there is this idea of a proclamation. Yeah. So what I would say to, to folks is, yeah, that quote that looks good hanging on your wall, mm-hmm. I, I would not just say, oh, my word, that is awful. And, and to, this, here's what I like about the quote. Yeah. And I think you nailed it, dude, when you link it to the book of James. Yeah. It definitely, it definitely most resonates with that book. Mm-hmm. Your actions matter. Mm-hmm. That's part of the whole deal. Yep. How our lives are affected by what we say we believe. And people, what does Jesus say? Uh, they'll know you're my disciples by your love for one another. Yes. But um, I will say this, dude. I've met a lot of nice, altruistic people. Yes. I don't know how to find my only hope by putting my faith in Jesus Christ to save me and turn from my sin by seeing nice people. Yes. Yeah. That nice people, they might arrest my attention. Wow, you don't see that too often. But if nobody ever gets around to speaking. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Well, and and let's be real. I mean, I one one of the things that I encounter with uh, students in the school that I teach and, and, you know, for clarification, it is a Christian school, yep. but I, uh, would question how many students actually have a professing knowledge of who Christ uh-huh. is because the prevailing thought of the world, which means the prevailing thought of many of the students at the school is if I'm a good person, sure. if I treat my neighbor with kindness mm-hmm. and respect, yeah. then won't God just accept me into heaven Uh like do i do i actually have to have this relationship with christ do i have to profess that he's the only one who can save me you know that when you when you put all of that into context and understand that the world actually preaches good deeds the world preaches doing the right thing yeah treating your neighbor with kindness treating people with respect that doesn't leave us with hope because at the end of the day, all of the good deeds that I could possibly do aren't going to save me. Yes. You know, we, we've we talked about this before. The, the proclamation that is given to the shepherds is peace on earth. Yeah. And that goes beyond this kind of Christmas sentiment. You know, yep. you and I, Greg, we, we're, we're Christmas slops. We yep. love the sentiment. I'm, love I'm, the I'm nostalgia. still recovering that it's over, dude. Still recovering. Uh, well, it's not over in our house. Right. We, we, <laughs> we still have everything up and decorated. I love and it, man. We we celebrate King's Day, which is uh, January 6th. January 6th, that's so, right. So, yeah. um, you know, we do all of that. And so, yeah, we, we, pr- we probably got another week before we start taking everything down. But a- as much as you know, I'm all about that. The the nature of that proclamation, and this is what I tell my students all the time, is you don't understand. We are in we are in uh, danger. We are we are being accused, and rightfully so, of cosmic treason. Yeah. We as humanity have set ourselves against the Maker of the universe. Yeah. And this is Him sending His emissaries, yep. saying, "I'm not here to wipe you out." Yeah. That peace is a, I'm going to make and declare peace on your behalf. Yes. I'm not going to come in and exact the justice that is deserved yes. on my behalf. And and understanding that really helps us to understand not only the message of Christmas, which we've just spent uh, time talking about, but the message of the gospel, the announcement, the proclamation yes. that... Words matter. Words matter. Dude, um, that's what I was looking up as you were talking. I didn't want you to think I was texting. Um, you know, this week, uh, the other thing I'm going to start uh, at our church is a series that I did, mm-hmm. oh, 12 or 15 years ago mm-hmm. uh, in pieces on the Gospel of Mark. Yes. We're going to be in it for some time. Which we will more than likely be commenting on this podcast over the oh, next no several doubt. weeks. So, in, in fact, you'd be ready when you're out there and I see you and I'm standing up there on the platform. Uh, there's going to be something, you know, every week. Oh, yeah. I'm like, man, there's not time to develop this. Bell, right. write this down. <laughs> I want to talk about this this yes. week. I expect this to inform many, many of our upcoming conversations. There's so much in the Gospel of Mark. But it's interesting how it starts. I'll yeah. preview this. 
the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So the the pre uh, or the the what, what's the word the harbinger if you want to yeah. use a fancy word which is going to be John the Baptist yes. right uh, who rolls out the red carpet um, I'm just fascinated uh, listen to the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight that is propositional mm-hmm. the Lord is coming get ready John appears etc um, we get his baptism and it's interesting that it appears to me when you read Peter's sermons in the book of Acts, Mm -hmm. they are basically a condensed version of Mark's gospel. Mm. They always start with the baptism and with death and resurrection, um, which is the very structure. You know, Mark doesn't have a Christmas story. Right. He's the standout. John sort of has one. Right. There's a a connection there. (laughs) Prologue, yes. Yes. But then you've got a couple of things that set the stage, John the Baptist, Jesus' temptation, Mm -hmm. and then, interestingly enough, when Jesus publicly, officially begins his ministry in verse 14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming Mm -hmm. the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So the very arrival of the true servant king, the Messiah who's long awaited, the stage has been set. How does how does it begin? It starts with him preaching. Yeah. It's proclamational. Yeah. There are words, propositions. Dude, no matter I mean, and you know, when we talked with Kevin last week, yeah. I think the thing that touched me is Kevin is such a man of application and mm-hmm. action. He yes. gets in with students and wants them to know, I see you. Yes. I care about you. Yeah. I love you. And a lot of that isn't isn't speaking right. initially, yeah. right? But you ask Kevin, what does he most want for these kids to find their true joy, identity, calling, destiny? Yeah. He wants them to know about Jesus. And yes. he's eager to tell them about him. Yes. Not mime. Yes. Not, I loved your thing with charades. Dude. <laughs> we have to do that congregational meeting <laughs> where I just want to see how many people would stay around. Guys, we're going to do this, but all through charades. Can we do the whole thing like our our, his, our, our year history and review? <laughs> and dude, then, the and budget. The budget. <laughs> <laughs> Matt might like doing the budget with charades. You know, hey, we're going to do this with your One ends. word, yes. two syllables. <laughs> so, But you just think, dude, when somebody picks up a book, because yeah. I, I recognize, dude, preaching's fallen on hard times, yeah. uh, even from well-meaning people, mm-hmm. really well-meaning people. Dude, I've told you this way, way back. I worked with a guy. Uh, I don't know if he ever considered the implication, but he, he would say in various meetings I was in, yeah, you know, preaching I don't think is that important. I don't think anybody ever changes through a sermon, to which I was always, hey, thanks, man. Um, that's, <laughs> none taken. Yeah, none taken. That's all I do. Right. This is a smart dude. This is a well read dude, and, and I believe a, a guy who loves the Lord, but believes hmm. preaching isn't significant. Really doesn't matter. If your church preaches well, they don't preach well. That, that's not what it's about. And we have to be careful because, you know, dude, I'm a huge relationship guy. Yeah. So I'm sometimes teased and almost uh, uh, taken in by the, yeah, it's all about relationships. It it is lived out among relationships. But what does that mean? Because, dude, I can have a lot of meaningful relationships in a book reading club. Right. I can have a lot of meaningful relationships in a movie watching club. Dude, you and I could jump in with people that love Lord of the Rings, Breaking Bad, Common interest group. Well, I couldn't. Do yeah, that well, you back. couldn't do that one, dude. <laughs> Not yet. I'm, there's still hope. I'm still praying. It's still on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, it will be forever, right? <laughs> Netflix. It'll be uh, Stranger Things and Breaking Bad holding it up. But w- we can develop those relationships. Yeah. But at some point, yeah. the proclamation, right, of you are a sinner, the cosmic treason thing yes. you just dropped, right, that has to be spoken. Yes. So also is it intended to be proclaimed, but let me tell you about Jesus yes. and how much he loves you and what he did for you, yeah. what he offers to you freely in the gospel. That's where the Assisi quote fails. Yes. If necessary, use it. well, it's always necessary. Right. 
right? There's yeah. no if about. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I think I think what you said is so <sighs> important. You know, it's that relationship thing, and I've I've come to value and appreciate evangelizing through relationships. Um, I, you know, as, as you know, Greg grew up in a Pentecostal church, yeah. Pentecostal household. Um, and there was a lot of, um, these going out with the tracks and, you know, doing the quick evangelism. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I'm not going to, uh, denigrate it because I think that there was some value in, especially as a young kid going uh-huh. up to adults, like you have this, the four spiritual laws guide oh, yeah, sure. and I did it. Yep. things like that. Um, but I will say that, that the, the preaching of the gospel and the great commission has two parts to it. And, and that stuff only fulfills one. Yes. It, it does fulfill the idea of, of preaching the gospel. It does fulfill that announcement of the gospel, but it does not fulfill the mandate to make disciples. Yes. Because that is, hey, I might never see you again, so here's this, and somebody prays a prayer, and okay, we're good now, that person's yep. saved. How do you know? Are you tracking their progress as a believer? Well, no, that's not my job now. Yeah. It's like, well, wait a minute. The, the Great Commission yeah. is not just the preaching of the gospel and letting them say a prayer. Right. It's the discipleship that comes afterwards. Yeah. You know, and so that's where I think relationships are so important because, you know, the idea of 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 moving a a discipleship relationship forward with that salvation. You know, we talked about this a little bit yeah. last week with Kevin. If my goal and mindset and mentality is the ultimate goal of this person's salvation, then once they're saved, I'm done. Yeah, you move on. My responsibility is done, and I go on to the next person. But if my goal is to do what Jesus said, love God and love others, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, yeah. then it, it it's going to go beyond just are they saved, but it's going to go beyond are they growing in their faith, which yeah. is what this is about, right? Yeah. This is that series that we're talking about. Right. And so um, let, let, let me um, talk to you a little bit and ask you, um, with, with this and, and the Great Commission and the using words if necessary, because you are a communicator, yeah. how do we then live out and show that we are believers, yeah, right, because because we've established that it is important to live it out and show it. Yep. Um, and and we talked about Roscoe and his view of the hypocrisy and yep. things like that. Um, but I think I'm thinking more along the lines of at some point we're all going to show ourselves to be quote unquote hypocrites, right? Right, because I mean that's the nature of being a Christian is yep. that we are going to do things that we say we shouldn't do. So talk to us about that piece a little bit. And this this is actually really unscripted for those no, of you who I, are, um, I love talking about who are listening because I think <laughs> that is important because that's that also needs to be understood in this context and in light of this. It does. I'm glad you said it, Nathan, because otherwise you could create a lot of despair mm. because, um, well, my New Year sermon, you know, uh, uh, which was all virtual, was basically about resolutions. I didn't want to rain on yeah. people's parade. I probably did, and some of that was just to create a little, you know, dramatic effect. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's get our minds thinking about this. But I mentioned that I reached uh, out to a friend years ago who owned a gym. Notice I have a friend who owned a gym because, you know, what would I know <clears throat> about a gym? Uh, I know about the gym dandy at Friendly's. That's a different gym. But uh, I, um, I asked him point blank, hey, when does it die down? And he goes, oh, I know what you're asking, meaning after the resolution crowd – he says the time to come. Honestly, last week of January, he goes, by the second week of February, you're good. Mm. The crowds have gone that, and you kind of see who's thinned out. So I was talking about what is it about us? Yeah. And I showed several articles in that sermon, uh, just their titles, that resolutions you can actually keep. Yeah. How? how to keep the resolutions. Yeah. We don't even have uh, articles now on resolutions. Right. Because we all know, well, how do I keep them? And there were tips and techniques, et cetera. And they're fine. You know, weight loss and financial goals and, you know, becoming a more well-rounded person, all these kinds of things. But we have jokes about how we don't reach them. And I, I spent time in Romans 3, 23, 
which I think is, to use the fancy word, right, an axiom. Right. It's universal. All places, all times, all cultures. Yep. For all have sinned, past tense. I said, okay, that means, look, you can look back at your past and say, well, at least everybody else has blown it too. Mm-hmm. But it's the second part of that verse that is more alarming to me. And fall short, present tense. Mm. Uh, it's not all sinned and fell short, but we are in this moment. I mean, you blew it and you're still blowing it. Right. You're dropping the balls every day. So we have within us this propensity to blow it. That doesn't leave us when we're Christians. Yeah. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. Yes, we can go to war against his desires. But we know, we've talked about this on other casts, and I'm sure we will again. Yeah. We are going to blow it. So I'm glad you asked it, Nathan, because the answer is not, hey, preach the gospel and then live to show the gospel is real. Mm. That's true in the sense, but if we mean by showing it's real, we always have our stuff together. Yeah. We're in big trouble. Yeah. I think one of the ways we show that our actions match our proclamation, what we tell people we believe, is to make sure that we're very clear about the gospel, which is Jesus saves us because we can't save ourselves. Mm. And I didn't need him the day I came to faith. Mm. I need him every day Mm. after that, just like I did at the beginning. My hope hasn't changed. I've not now moved on from, yeah, that was cool when I needed grace. And no, I've moved on to discipleship and principles. No, I need grace. Yes. I need mercy. So I think it, I'll tell you in, a, in practical terms, dude. Yeah. I'm I, The older I get, we could do a podcast on this too. I I find this, Lord, let me not be the guy. I'm, I, this scares me because I know my own sin. Yeah. Let me not be the guy who's who can't admit that he's wrong. Yeah. I think we should regularly be saying, Luther said, the life of the Christian is a life of repentance. Yes. Which just means, I'm wrong. Yeah. Why would I expect any any differently? So we're quick to own our stuff. Mm. Our neighbors see us blow it, and if if we blew it in front of them, or we lost, you know what, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry I did that. You did not deserve to be spoken to like that, and I want to be a better neighbor. I'm a jerk. You know, um... I'm not trying to give license to just do whichever want and sure. then apologize later, but I'm saying when we do blow it, yeah, we're owning it. Yeah. And I actually think we're matching our what we proclaim with our words. Yeah. You know, and I, I've told you that Nathan all the time. I, the most powerful moments I've had with my kids is when I deal not with their sin, yeah. but when I deal with my own in front of them. Yeah. And I remember telling my oldest when she was young, I said, Sam. You know, when she was very little, so I referred to myself as daddy. You mm-hmm. know, I, uh, when she was like seven or eight, I said, "What? Your your daddy needs a savior." Mm-hmm. And this is when I tell you about Jesus. It's not just because you need him; I need him. Yeah, I need him. And to to show that to a watching world, yeah, I think is a little bit of how they go together. Well, and I think. Sorry, in, dude. I preached. Oh that. no, that's I didn't mean that's to, awesome. But. No, that's that's awesome. And, <clears throat> and I think. Isn't that the importance, though, of, of the preaching is is the understanding and the being able to to say that I am not, as, as you said earlier, I am not yet glorified. Yes. Right? Yes. Ten cent word for I am not yet perfected. Yes, absolutely. Um, I am a, I think it was uh, Ruth Graham Bell who on her tombstone um, said, you know, construction now complete. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, That's you awesome. know, the idea that on this side of heaven, um, I'm not actually being hypocritical because I'm telling you that I'm a train wreck yeah. and that Christ is the only hope that I have, yeah. that um, on any given day, I, I will lose patience with my wife. Right. I will lose patience with my children. I will lose patience with my coworkers. Yeah. Um, I, will, I will say and do things. Even going deeper than that, I will think and feel things. Sure that if I were to let those things come to light yeah. are repulsive and horrible, yeah. and that's why I need a Savior. Yeah. Um, and so letting people know those things hopefully will dispel this notion that you are always on performance, because I think that's the other danger of this quote, is that I always have to be performing. I agree. I'm so glad you said that, Nathan. I'm always a little leery of the 
very focused action step. It's it's a wonderful aspiration. Yeah. Well, we talked about Christmas Carol a few weeks back in yeah. our Christmas series. It's the same thing. Like, dude, uh, that's what I did. Like, I finally saw Spirited. I don't know if you saw it. Yes. Yep. Did you notice they actually deal with that when Ryan yeah. Reynolds is in the pub? Yep. With a feral who obviously is yeah. supposed to be like the real Ebenezer Scrooge. Yep. Um, he says, "Yeah. So how long were you good? Oh, about three and a half weeks. Yeah. Remember, it's a great line because he yeah. said, "Well, in my time, the leading cause of death was January. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a gold <laughs> quote, wasn't it, dude? I, I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> but they kind of dealt with that. Yeah. Remember that. Well, how do you know you're good? Yeah. And I'd like to answer that." From I think everybody's intuitive experience, not yes. my expertise. We're not. Yeah. We can't go the distance. Most of us, we make jokes, we can't keep a simple resolution, one right. resolution for more than a month. Right. So to live a life that puts others ahead of our own, that prioritizes the feelings of others ahead of our own feelings. Yes. Consistently, like Jesus did every moment of every day, right. without fail. Woo. Yeah. Uh, you know, wow. You and I both know someone um, who uh, has made this observation before um, that think about all the benefits and, and advantages that God was going to provide Israel with. Yeah. You, you follow me and you obey my commandments, then I'm going to bless you beyond anything you could imagine. You know, we, we know that in Israel's history, they were the first uh, people group to experience a six day work week. Yep have the Sabbath off because God was going to provide for them yeah. that one day. They, they weren't going to have to worry about it. But many people may not know that God actually promised them that um, they, they that it, it, with 50 years yeah. that they were going to have this year of, year Jubilee. of Jubilee. And it was basically, it was going to be a year-long festival and celebration yeah. where, where they were just going to be partying all year. Yeah. And, and God was like, I'm going to let you enter into my joy and blessing of this year-long party yeah. every 50 years. Um, your, your enemies aren't going to be able to walk before you. Yep. you know, I mean, all of these benefits. Like, yeah. Israel was going to be set for life yep. if they just obeyed God. Yep. But isn't that the point of the gospel, is that no one can do it? They couldn't do it. Dude, remember, I think we talked about this before, uh, Dave Shive, mm -hmm. who's been on this podcast for, and a brilliant... Uh, scholar, uh, Dave. If you hear that, I called you a scholar, but he is. Um, he, he's not. He's not. He's not shy about the brilliant part. Yes, the exactly part. the scholar part, right? <laughs> but he. Um, there's no evidence, archaeologically, historically, document docu documentation anywhere, that the Israelites ever practiced the year of jubilee. Yeah, not any evidence that they did. Yeah. And and I I wonder. You know, and, and you know, all those incentives, mm -hmm. all those plus, and they couldn't do it. Yeah. So there's a there's a holy within a striving. Yeah. Oh, I want to be like Jesus. Yeah. There's a simultaneous, and every day I see my shortcomings, and I thank God that He stood in my place and yes. obeyed where I didn't. I want to, I want to get back on course. I want to follow Him. I want to keep moving forward. Yet when I blow it, and I will to turn around to a watching world and point to him yeah, and identify with people in their struggles because I'm still having them. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of power that comes yeah. through that authenticity. Yeah. Well, and let's, I mean, let's be honest, you know, if I, I think about, um, and, you know, Joy says this too, and, and I think for the most part it's fairly accurate. My temperament by nature, yeah. believer or not, um, I'm a pretty kickback guy. You are, dude. Pretty relaxed, yep. uh, except for when I get behind the wheel of a car. Um, <laughs> I go from Bruce Banner to the Hulk in yes. about two seconds. Don't make me angry. Um, and and I think about that in those moments, and it's like, man, if you know, what if I had kids? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, feels weird to say, but in those moments, by God's grace, I do not have children. <laughs> um, yeah. And but you know thinking about that and and man if my children were watching me in that moment oh yeah you I've know, been there um, thinking about just I, how how can I perform that you yeah. know and and I and that's what the gospel does is it takes away our performance it does the, there is no performance you know Paul talks about that yeah. you know his education his upbringing yeah. 
all of the benefits, a Pharisee among Pharisees. If you, you know, and, and it's funny because it's, you know, we talk about humble bragging. I mean, this yeah. is like the definition of humble yes. bragging here. You yes. know? If you guys want to know who is worthy of, of religion and religious pedigree and if you could earn your way into heaven, who would be able to earn their way into heaven? Paul's like, it would be me. Yeah, no doubt. And and he strips all that away and says, it's it's garbage. Yeah. It is absolute, you know, maybe we'll talk about this sometime, but you know, it's it's refuse. Scubula. Scubula. Poop. Compared yep. to knowing Christ yep. as Lord. Oh, dude. Absolutely. Absolutely. I um quote that I shared recently uh, in that message, I just think time so well with what you and I are talking about, Nathan. Robert Capon, the life of grace is not an effort on our part to achieve a goal we set for ourselves. It is a continually renewed attempt simply to believe that someone else has done all the achieving that is needed. Mm. Boy. That's good. Isn't that something? That's good. Somebody else has done all the achieving. Yeah. And how thankful we are that he's done it. So yeah, dude, didn't expect it to go there, but I'm glad you took it there, man. My friend, we are, we are running out of time. Yeah. That went by so it did. fast. I feel like it's been five minutes. Now I wonder if our listeners are like, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us. I hope not. I hope you were into, I was into it, man. Yeah. this Because uh, it just ties into so many areas of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And again, uh, you know, we're talking uh, bad quote, good quote. We'll get to the good quote next week. Yes. It's a good um, one. But our bad quote, uh, once again, just kind of say it, preach the gospel at times, use words only when necessary. And I think, Greg, we've shown it's necessary. The proclamation yes. of the gospel, the words we use are so necessary. 100%. Because, again, it doesn't matter um, who you are. I mean, you can be a good, upstanding person, right? The, the rich young ruler yeah. that encounters Christ, you know, puts forth his good deeds. Yeah. Um, and, and Christ still tells him, you're lacking. Yeah. That you don't have it. Yep. None of us do. So, my friend, we are out of time. Ah, this I has been great. It, Loved it. Until the next time, we just rock the Casbah. Thank you again for listening to these Go to 11, an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Once again, please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you ever find yourself in the Forest Hill, Maryland area, please feel free to stop by at 135 Industry Lane, and you can get all of our service times and information at ChristFC.org. These go to 11.